Hi guys, um, long time not seeing you and uh, so, like long time since I posted my last video. So I wanna, um, today I wanna talk about saturation transfer difference. This is a really popular experiment on protein ligand interaction, uh, especially when um, you wanna look at the ligand, not the protein, right? So, um, Let's say you have, or when you're like looking at um, low affinity ligands and you want to know, for example, if that ligand binds or not to the your protein, okay? And you have sometimes a limitation of like your protein's too big or you're not able to concentrate your protein too much. So you want to confirm like that the, your ligand, for example, it's bind your protein and you want to also have like, Sometimes you also want to have information of how, for example, what is the pose of your ligand inside of your uh, of your protein. So this is a experiment that you run when you have like micromolar to millimolar um, affinity, because for example, you you don't want to your ligand cannot like bind your protein and stay there. So if you have like nanomolar affinity that your ligand binds, so in any K off is so like so small that your protein takes your ligand takes forever to dissociate, you won't see anything, okay? Because you're observing the free like the effect of the binding on the free ligand. So uh, this is like schematically how the experiment works. So you saturate the protein, okay? Uh, being careful not to saturate any of the ligand's uh, signal. And uh, once the protein is saturated, it's going to transfer this saturation to the ligands that binds and unbinds the protein. So you're going to observe an effect, okay, on the free ligand. So for example, this is a, is a, is a representation when like you have like the, the circles, it binds and the, the triangles doesn't bind, like don't bind the, the doesn't bind the protein. So uh, when you do like the diff, like uh, you, you acquire like a reference experiment and a saturation experiment. So when you do like the difference between the, your reference experiment and your uh, saturation experiment, you have like a residual or a difference between two of them because saturation was transferred to the circles Okay, and not in, but was not transferred to the triangles because the triangles are not binding the protein. Okay, so uh, how do I set this experiment, for example? So um, there are a lot of uh, pulse sequence, um, uh, but I especially like uh, this this one. It's called STD. So as STD diff ES for excitation sculpt GP.3. So this is um, one of the pulse sequence. I like this one. And uh, what is what is the parameter that I have to like uh, adjust for my um, for my experiment? So it's the I'm, I have to have like this FQ to least. So this is a list of like usually it's like. Um, reference where like uh, for example minus 40 i have nothing there okay or could be like my plus 40 could be plus 20 for example it's just it, it cannot be like too close to zero because you can like eventually affect um because you have like protein peaks uh, uh there so you won't like your reference you like you don't want to like affect any not neither the protein neither the the ligand and zero is my saturation. So here I have a protein that has peaks on zero uh, at zero ppm. So I could put like something like, can I put like 0 0.5 or 0 0.8? Yeah, I can, but I have to make sure that there is no peaks from my uh, from my ligand there. Can I uh, run like other? Um, can I put like other uh, saturation points? Yeah, I can. So I can check that as well. So um, this is like a, a summary of how I, for example, I, I have to, if I adjust my ZGESGP experiment, for example, my water suppression, and then I can copy to the second one, for example, okay? And I can give this uh, read bottom, there's uh, screen STD uh, underscore STD all. So it's gonna, uh, for example, um, 
load all the parameters for this pulse sequence, but I can also like do the regular settings um, and set this experiment. So um, the FQ2 uh, list, I can click on list and go there and just set. So I can click on edit, for example, if I want to like edit this parameter. So this, for example, is in PPM. So it's minus 40 PPM and zero PPM. Okay. I can also load if I have like saved before, like, uh, or if someone has like some list saved, I can just click on the three dots and also load a uh, previous like list. Okay. And the processing uh, is STD split. One important thing is, as I have like two different points, I have my TD, okay, so this is a pseudo to the experiment. So my TD in F1, as I have the only, I have two points on my uh, frequency list is equal to, okay. So this is for uh, processing. So STD split is a macro. And this macro actually, uh, it splits your data into reference and the difference, okay? So this is really useful. So uh, this is an example uh, where I have, um, um, it's like tryptophan and ibuprofen. It's not quite a good example because ibuprofen binds really high affinity to uh, BSA, so, uh, but I still can see, for example, on the difference, I can see all the all the peaks from uh, from the tryptophan that binds in the micromolar to um, to millimolar range. And also see like this all out of phase peaks here from the sugars that they don't they they don't bind the the protein. These were like this sugar comes from the from the pills, like the ibuprofen was like actually extract from like a, a, a buprofen pill. Um, so this is like how the experiment works. And um, so for example, some uh, some advice in terms of setup. So D20 in general, like we, we use is like from 0 0.5 to five seconds, but you can actually go like some people when you want to build like the curves um, and to see like, um, for example, if you want to like check for uh, difference of like for the difference in intensity, for example, versus saturation time, you can go up like to 10 seconds, for example, of saturation. If you want to check if you have like um, this kind of um, of behavior, uh, the spin uh, D9 is the, the spin log time. So usually it's from 10 to 50 um, milliseconds. So you're like leave. Um, the saturation to spread. Um, this is the uh, shape pulse for uh, saturation. So this is the power related to this pulse. Okay. So this pulse, usually uh, we use the standard 50 uh, milliseconds duration. Okay. But you set the power and the power. Uh, okay. So uh, you can either like choose the power, for example, why between 40 and 60? So 60 you have like really uh, weak saturation and 40 is like strong saturation. Um, so you don't wanna actually, you wanna be selective. You wanna just se selectively excite the, the protein peak, okay? You can also like, uh, there is a, like, uh, on this pulse sequence, you can also put on the ZG points on your pulse sequence, you can put like minus the calc power. So. You, then you choose, instead of choosing the power, you can choose, okay, I want to excite a 20 hertz. I, I want to excite 100 hertz, 200 hertz. You know, Again, you want to be selective, so you won't go uh, beyond like 200 hertz, for example. But you want to also excite um, a reasonable region of your protein. Another important thing is, uh, as delta 1 is D1 minus D31, Okay, and D31 is your saturation time. Uh, the minimum D, D20 that you build, that you put there has to be at least the, the this is the minimum, okay? Uh, it has the same size of D1. Otherwise you're gonna have like a negative number here and you, you're gonna have like a complaint. So I like to use like Delta, uh, for example, Delta one equal 
zero or one second. So to have zero, you just make D1 equal D20. So, and you can go like, if you have like a 0.5, 0.5, one second, two seconds, uh, whatever. So um, that's it. And I hope you are able to set your um, STD experiment after watching my video and uh, please leave your uh, comments and um, whenever, um, if you have any um, suggestions, please uh, reach me uh, anytime, okay?